Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to advertise on YouTube in 2023. Now, I'm, this is going to be a complete walkthrough. I'm going to show you right from the beginning. So if you're a beginner, if you've never done a YouTube ad in your life, this will work really well for you. Or if you've done YouTube ads in the past, even if you're pretty good at them, you're probably going to get a tidbit or two out of this that could make a big difference over the lifetime of your business. And it's really important that you stay up to date, too, because the YouTube advertising algorithm is always changing. They're always making updates to it. They just made a really big update towards the end of 2022. So you really, you know, if you're looking at tutorials that are four years old, probably you're going to be missing a bunch of stuff. So, um, you know, I'm recording this at the very, very end of 2022 for 2023. So, I mean, if you're watching this in 2025, um, probably it's out of date and you should like leave a comment asking me to make an update if I haven't already. Anyway, so I love YouTube advertising. I have multiple successful businesses that are built entirely on the pack of YouTube advertising. Like that's how I get the vast majority of my clients in the door and uh, to cold traffic, by the way. So you don't need to have a YouTube following for this to work. When I started, I had no YouTube following at all. As of making this video, I have a small following, but still the vast majority of my customers come from cold traffic that I get from YouTube advertising. And I have spent literally hundreds of thousands of dollars on YouTube ads because it keeps paying me back. I mean, I put a dollar in, I get $2 out. I put a dollar in, $2 out. It's like the, you know, the YouTube ads ATM machine. It's pretty amazing. And I've also helped a bunch of other people with their own YouTube ads. So I'm pretty good at it by now. So if you're wondering why you should listen to me, that's why. So let's go ahead and get into it. So step one, in, and this is a process, by the way, to create a successful YouTube ad campaign. There are a few steps along the way. So I'm gonna walk you through what those steps are. So step one is know your audience, right? This is something that a lot of people fail to consider and a lot of ads fail to perform as a result. Right. So there's a little bit of pre planning that you need to do before you actually go and create an ad. So number one and most important thing is know your audience. So what do you know, want to know exactly? Well, you want to know their desires. Right. What do they want? What are their goals? How what can you help them to get? How can you improve their lives? They want you want to know their pains or their frustrations. Right. What are they dissatisfied with that you could help them with? What what is the most painful thing to to these people? You know, a lot of people are driven primarily by pain. They want to get away from the things that are painful to them. So if you know what their pains are, then you can communicate to them that those are the pains that you can get rid of. Right. And then the last thing is challenges. Right. What are the things that are keeping them from being able to get to their desires and being able to escape their pains? For example, let's let's take a, a weight loss example. So somebody wants to lose weight. Um, and so, you know, they don't just want to lose weight in a vacuum. They want to lose weight for a reason, right? They want to lose weight so they can feel sexy, so they can feel confident, so they can get a partner that they like. Um, maybe, you know, or maybe it's pain related, like their doctor told them that they're going to, that they're in pre-diabetes and that they're going to die if they don't lose weight. Right. Or maybe their their lover left them uh, because they, you know, in their mind, it was because they're overweight. Right. There's if you know the desires and pains, you can communicate with them. You can relate to them on the exact level that they're at. And then the challenge is like, why can't they lose weight? Right. And so maybe the challenge is because they have a, a genetic type that is tends to be overweight. Maybe the challenge is that they don't have time to go to the gym. Maybe the challenge is that um, they don't have the willpower to stop eating sugary foods. You know, so if we can nail down like what are the most painful or what are the, the most common desires, the most common pains, the most common challenges that your audience has, that's how you can really communicate effectively with them. So if you know that in advance, and there are ways to figure out this information, this is, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole because there's a lot to it, but you can actually research and figure out this information, something that I teach my students all the time. And so these are the things to know about your audience. And then there's a fourth thing that's also really, really important that most people don't consider. And this is something uh, that's called sophistication or market sophistication. I believe this originally comes from Eugene Swartz. 
Um, although I didn't get it directly from him. I've, I've heard it elsewhere. But basically what sophistication means is where are they on the journey, right? So um, like for the weight loss example, have they, what have they tried in the past? Or have they, are, are they even aware that they're overweight? Right. I mean, you know, probably most people are, but there's a possibility that they don't even realize they just think it's normal. Maybe they grew up in a, a family of fat people in a town of fat people and they think that it's perfectly normal. Right. So that would be somebody that's unaware. In fact, I'll give you the, the levels here. You have unaware. Don't realize that they have a problem. Next level is called problem aware. Right. They realize they have a problem, but they don't know what to do about it. So somebody that realizes, oh, no, I'm overweight. I, I better lose weight somehow, right? That's somebody who's problem aware. Then the next level is called solution aware. It means they know of a particular solution to solve their problem, but they haven't actually done it yet. So maybe they realize that the, or they think that the solution is the keto diet, right? That would be a person that's solution aware. They're still overweight and they've heard about this thing called the keto diet and it sounds pretty good, and they want to get on the keto diet, but they're not quite sure how to start, right? That's a solution aware pro person. Um, and then the next one is called product aware. So that's somebody who actually uh, knows about your specific product. So in this case, it could be that you have a, a keto system where you, you help people that are totally new to the keto diet. Maybe you have a book. Let's say you have a book about how to do the keto diet, right? And they know about your book. Um, then they are product aware, right? And then there's another level called most aware, but I don't really deal with that. So I'm just going to kind of leave that out. Um, so how you approach your audience is going to be very, very different depending on which level of sophistication they're at, right? So let's say that so the person is unaware. Um, then the person doesn't know that they're overweight. Well, the first thing that you have to show them is that they have a problem. Right. They, you have to show them that they and, you know, the weight one is a really a great example for this one. Um, but maybe they have a, a like a, a relationship issue and that, you know, their wife is about to walk out on them, but they have no idea. Right. They think everybody everything is fine. So you have to show them like, hey, are you seeing these behaviors in your wife? That probably means she's about to walk out on you. Right. You have to show them you have to get them aware of the problem. Right. Like each each one of these, um, you have to push per the person to the next one. Right. So unaware, you want them to you need to show them the problem. Right. Problem aware. OK, the person knows that they have a problem. OK, I'm overweight, but I don't know what to do about it. Well, then you need to show them a solution. Right. Show them a solution. So you say if the person is problem aware, they know that they're overweight. You might say, um, OK, well, have you thought hey, here's some information about the keto diet like this is, you know, I lost 50 pounds in three months by switching to the keto diet. Right. Um, and then and how you word your your ads and we're going to get into this in a bit is going to depend on this. So you ask you, you say things based on where they're at. So like our problem where you ask the person, are you 30 to 50 pounds overweight and not quite sure what to do about it? Right. That's a problem aware um, ad. Now, solution aware, they have an idea. It's like, are you 30 to 50 pounds overweight and looking to get on the keto diet? Right. If they're solution aware, they know what they want to do. They just don't have the specific product for it. Now you want to push them to the product, right? Show them product, right? So if you want to get on the keto diet, you don't quite know how to do it, then use my product, right? And then product aware, they already know about their your product is just push them to buy, right? Push them to pull the trigger. So if you know your audience, if you know all of this in advance, this will make things much, much, much easier for you in every other part of your sales process. So please do not skip this. You know, a lot of people, their ads don't work and they blame the advertising platform or they think that they don't have the right targeting or something when really it's just that they don't really understand their audience. Um, 
And I, oh, another another thing to consider: don't try to do multiple of these at the same in the same ad, right? Like, don't. Um, I'll use an example for myself. I show people how to create online course and coaching businesses that generate twenty thousand dollars or more per month. And so I have there there are multiple different audiences that I could go for here, right? And so I have two main audiences. Um, one is is basically problem aware, right? That they're usually they're working a job and they're not making as much money as they would like and they would like to find some sort of business opportunity but they don't know what right and then some of them are solution aware so they have they already know about courses and coaching they know why it's such an amazing business model and they want to do it or maybe they're already trying to do it but they haven't had much success yet Right. So I do not want to write an ad to both groups at the same time because it's just going to flop because the problem aware people, they don't know what kind of business they want to start yet. And so before I ever try to show them my product, I have to convince them that creating a course or coaching business is the right solution. Right. Before I ever try to talk about, hey, you should hire me to help you with that. Whereas the solution aware people have already figured out that a course or coaching business is the right way for them to go. Now I just need to say, hey, I'm the guy to show you how to do it. Right. So that's the first part. Um, know your audience. Super, super important. Please do not skip this. A lot of people skip this and a lot of people get frustrated and fail as a result. So that's step one. Step two is write your script. Right. So the script is what you're actually going to say in the video. And um, you are going to have to be on video. I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, you could just use PowerPoint slides. Actually, you don't necessarily have to show your face, but you do at least have to talk on video. And if you're an introverted sort of person that's not good at that, um, there's a bunch of kind of, of kind of hacks that will make it a lot easier for you. And I'm going to show you some of them. So don't like don't be scared away. Um, and also keep in mind, too, that, you know, if you're afraid to do something that's going to make you successful and prosperous, well, chances are you might want to just like face that fear. But <laughs> regardless, I'm still going to show you some ways to make it easier anyway. So your script is going to have basically three major sections, um, hook, body and CTA. And actually, I'm going to add a, a fourth one that's, in my opinion, is very important or. or it helps a lot. I'm going to show you how to do it. So the first part of the script is called your hook. This is where you get the person's attention. This is possibly the most difficult and also the most important part of your script, because if you think about what are people like, what's people's situation when they start watching a YouTube ad? Well, the way it works is they click on a video that they actually want to watch, and then your ad is interrupting them, showing them something that they don't really want to watch. Right. And so it, in, after five seconds, they have the ability to hit the skip button. And really, you don't want that. Um, in the case that the person is in your correct audience, you want them to watch it. And so basically you have five seconds to hook the person's attention or else they're going to skip your ad. So the best way, the easiest way that I've found to hook people's attention is to just call out their situation as it is. Right. And that's going to come back to this desires, pains, challenges, sophistication, right? So um, for example, we could say, are you looking to lose that last 10 pounds of belly fat, right? Which is a desire, but you don't have three hours a day to go to the gym, right? It's a challenge. That would be a hook that's calling out people's desires and challenges. And again, I'm just pulling this off of my head but you want to actually figure out what are people's desires, pains and challenges for real, because the better you figure that out, the more people, the, the more accurate you're going to be. And people are going to feel like you're talking directly to them. They'll be like, yeah, I do want to lose that last 10 pounds of belly fat. And, and you're right. I don't have three hours a day to go to the gym. The more you can nail their situation specifically, the more likely they are to listen to you. And so that's what you want to do in your hook. Um, your body of the, the body that is of the script. Um, <laughs> I'm getting confused because I'm talking about weight loss and talking about body. The body of your ad script 
And, and you're writing this out, by the way, before you ever film any of this. You want to, I write it out absolutely word for word and then film it later, right? But you want to plan it in advance. The body of your script is going to be um, essentially selling them on the next step of the process, right? So if they're problem aware, right, then you show them the solution. So for example, if they want to lose weight, but they don't know how, you can, the body of your ad can tell them about the keto diet, right? It could tell them about how the, you know, the scientific research showing that the keto diet works, or you could tell them about your personal story about how you lost your last 10 pounds of, of belly fat when you finally figured out the keto diet, right? So you want to, the body is to, to show um, whatever is the next step in the process. And then finally, you want to call to action. You tell them to do a specific thing. Now, for an ad, generally the call to action is just going to be click on the button in the ad, right? And then the page after that is going to tell them to opt in or to watch the free training or to buy the product or whatever the action is that you want them to take. But for now, your call to action is just click on the ad, right? And then finally, the last part is urgency. You it, explain to them why they should click on this ad now, right? why they can't wait until tomorrow or next week or next month. Um, and this is really, really important because people tend to procrastinate and you got to give them a good reason for why they should click on the ad now. And I will give you my magic phrase that I use like all the time for urgency that works really, really well. And I use in like every ad that I ever publish. And it is this, you may never see this video again. So if you're interested, now is your chance. Click the link and I'll see you inside. That's it. Can't believe I just gave that away for free on YouTube, but <laughs> there you go. That's my, my magic urgency phrase. So that's your script. You want to write that all out uh, before you ever start actually recording. So that brings us to, of course, step three is to record your video. Your ad is going to be a video generally in the, in the space of one to three minutes long, but that's not really rigid. Um, you can do and usually longer. Longer is OK, because there's, there's not much harm in making it longer. If you make it too short, that could be a problem, but generally one to three minutes is a good place to start. Um, now let's talk about how to actually record. So you don't need a fancy camera. Like a phone camera is just fine. If you have a fancy camera, you know, like you can see I have one behind me. It's a, I mean, it's kind of old and crappy and I'm, I'm like the worst photographer in the world, but <laughs> it's, um, it, it's decent, but just a phone camera, like a, any modern smartphone camera is going to be just fine. Um, and you just have to put it somewhere. You don't want to hold it so it's all shaky and stuff. You want to put it, mount it somewhere. If you can get like a tripod, then great. If not, then then put it on a table on a pile of books, like you know, whatever. It really doesn't matter. Um, the camera doesn't matter very much. What really does matter is the lighting. Right. You want to have light coming from in front of you. So, for example, I mean, you, I'm only just a little square in the corner, but my lighting here is pretty good because I have an open window in front of me. It's a nice sunny day. And I also have one of those little ring lights. It's just a cheap ring light um, that you can get for it's probably like 10 or 20 bucks. Um, if I turn off the ring light, it'll still be pretty good because I have the the. Um, window in front of me, but generally it's just, you have to have a decent amount of light coming from in front of you, not from behind you. That'll, um, and you know, if you're recording outside or something, then it's a little more difficult and you have shadows and stuff to deal with. Um, but yeah, just light coming in front of you. That's basically it. Third thing to consider is a congruent background, right? So you, you want something that looks, um, well, congruent with what you are advertising. So for example, if you look at my background, it's it's kind of cluttered, it's kind of messy. I would not have that for an ad, right? And honestly, I shouldn't have that for a YouTube video either, but I didn't really think of it before I started recording. So here you go, you get to see my messy office. <laughs> um, but you wanna, you know, if, it depends what you're advertising too. So like if you're advertising, um, you know, if you're advertising weight loss, then maybe having a, a gym in the background would make sense. Or if you're advertising some sort of make money offer, then having like a beautiful, look, rich looking house behind you would make sense. Now, that's not super important. Um, 
And if you don't have something like that that's readily available, then just, just a basic room, a basic white wall is fine. You, just what you want to avoid is, you know, you're, you're teaching people about how to lose weight and then you have like a, a shelf full of donuts behind you. <laughs> like that's just something that, that kind of contradicts your image or something that looks messy because it reflects badly on you. Um, so that's the congruent background. And then just read line by line. Right. This is something that I was telling you, I was going to give you a little hack if you're kind of an introverted person that has difficulty with this. I had a lot of difficulty when I first started. I mean, I sound probably better now, but that's because I've had a lot of practice. But anyway, so you, you just read your script line by line. And the way that this works, you can't just read it off a com like a, a computer screen or something because then you're not going to be looking at the camera. You have to be looking at the camera. So the way that I do this is I separate the sentences on the script and then I memorize each sentence and I say it a few times to myself, then I say it to the camera. I leave the camera rolling the whole time, right? And, and so there's going to be a lot of mess ups. There's going to be a lot of blank spaces and that's okay. I just edit them out later, which I'm going to show you how to do in just a minute. Um, and so if you do it that way, then you don't really have to be smooth or anything. You just memorize your line, look at the camera, say the line. If you mess up, look at the line again, memorize it, look at the camera, say it. And you just keep doing it until you get that line correct. Once you've done that one line once well, then you go on to the next line, do the same thing, right? So that's how to record your video. Step four is edit your video. Now this is pretty simple. I mean, you don't have to do anything fancy. In fact, these days, authentic works, right? So if you have this like highly produced, nicely edited video with all the music and the B-roll and all the fancy stuff like that, it doesn't even really work very well because it seems too polished. Whereas if you're just kind of you in a room talking like you're having a conversation with a friend, that actually tends to work a lot better. So the only thing that I really worry about most of the time with editing is just to take out errors and blank space, right? Pull out the errors and blank space. So when you say the line wrong, obviously you just cut that out. When there's a blank space in between the lines while you're memorizing what to say, cut out that blank space. And so once you're, you have it all pasted together, it looks nice and, and continuous and it sounds good. Now, the program that I use is Windows Movie Maker. It's free, it comes with Windows. Um, it's very, very basic. It's really easy to use, um, it, you know, and if you're on a Mac or something, then, then I'm sure you can find another simple program to use. But this is what I use. You don't, you don't need anything fancy. You don't need like Adobe Video Studio, whatever like the fancy one is. Just Windows Movie Maker works just fine for this. So. That's your uh, video edit. Now, the final part is to create your ad campaign. And this part, I'm going to actually walk you through because there's quite a lot here. I'm going to go kind of fast. This is going to be a bit of a broad overview, but I'm going to show you how exactly to do it. So let's take a look at our Google Ads dashboard. Now, if you're not aware, um, YouTube is owned by Google. So it's the Google Ads dashboard where you have all your YouTube ads. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new campaign here and new campaign and so you want to choose your objective. So what do I want the ad to get me? Do I want the ad to go directly to a sales page and get me sales? Do I want to get leads? Um, like, do I want people to opt in for something? Do I want people just to visit the website and that's it? Or, you know, there's a bunch of other stuff that I'm not, not quite as familiar with. So. Usually what I use is leads, right? I want opt-ins to a webinar or a, a free training. So I optimize for leads. So I'll select leads um, and then use conversion goals. It's gonna, it's gonna give me a bunch of defaults. Um, if you see submit lead form, click on remove that one. Uh, otherwise, in fact, let's see if I restore account goals. Yeah, so it shows submit lead forms, just remove it. Um, and, and this is complicated, like this is saying, what are the steps on the process that you want the algorithm to optimize for? This is a little more advanced. I'm not going to go into that in this video, 
If you are interested and you want me to go over it in future videos, leave me a comment, let me know. Um, it's, it's always good to know. And so I'm just gonna leave that for now. Select a campaign type, it's gonna be video campaign. All right, that's for YouTube. Continue, campaign name. I like to do it like this. Basically, um, it's gonna be product dash add script dash uh, targeting. Right, so this is, I mean, you're gonna wanna look at this and know what are you looking at every time you see the ad. So maybe my product is, um, I don't know, like uh, diet book, right? And may, maybe my ad script, I call why keto, like that's the beginning of the ad, so that's why I call the ad script. And then the targeting is for um, people like weight loss searches. Right, we're gonna get into the targeting in just a minute. In fact, you're probably not gonna know what you wanna target, so you just like put a question mark for now. <laughs> That's fine. For locations, um, you can put all countries and territories, US and Canada, US, or another location. Um, these are just the defaults that it gives me. So for me, usually I target US or US and Canada. Uh, it really depends on your product, right? If it's something local, that you can't do the whole country, then you probably wanna put enter another location, put your local area, whether that's the city or the county or a, a list of zip codes, you know, whatever makes sense for your business. Um, languages already defaults to English. Bid strategy, maximize conversions, that's good. Budget and dates, um, this is a how much do you wanna spend per day? I usually put either five or $10, to begin with, like no matter what I'm doing, just because I like to spend a little bit of money to see how it works before I go and spend a lot of money, right? So put that whatever you're comfortable with. And then um, what else? I like to go into additional settings here for devices. I, uh, I always turn off TV screens because if it's an ad that you want people to click on, it's pretty hard to click on it if they're watching it on a TV screen, like they're watching on a smart TV or something. So I always turn that off. Um, if it's not something to click on, if it's like call this phone number is the call to action, then you might want to leave it on because people can call the phone number when they're watching a TV screen. Um, and then everything else, just leave as is. Ad group name. Um, so, so currently we're at the conversion or the, the campaign level. And a campaign can have multiple ad groups, which means multiple targeting options, essentially. And then each ad group can have multiple ads, like so multiple different videos. Now, the way I normally do it is I just have one ad campaign, or I'm sorry, one ad group and one ad per campaign. I don't have multiple ad groups per campaign or multiple ads per ad group. To me, it's a lot easier to keep track of that way. Okay, audience, this is important. This is where we want to figure out who we are gonna show our ad to. So we hit create an audience and we, um, this is something that just changed recently. Like this, this changed drastically very recently. So generally, and there are a lot of different options here. I'm not gonna go over all of them. Again, if that's something you'd be interested in a deep dive, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll do another video on it. So. I like to do customer segments. Um, and if I say, let's say new segment, and there's there's two different kind of options, people with interest or purchase intentions, or people who search for any of these terms on Google, right? So let's say just people with interest in the keto diet. Press enter and I could leave it at that or I could expand it. Now it's showing, you know, 10 billion to 1 trillion weekly impressions. So this is like a really, really big audience already. Um, I, could, I could limit it just a little bit. I could say keto diet and weight loss, right? Um, or if I wanted to expand it, maybe I'd also put like paleo diet. Oh, and in fact, actually, it's any of these interests, right? So actually, I'm, I'm making the audience bigger, which I probably don't want to do. So let's just leave it at keto diet. We'll call the segment keto diet. Hit save. And so now we have created this new audience called keto diet, um, which is a custom segment. So those are the people that we are targeting. Now, 
Um, I can get into demographics a little bit if I want to. So for example, if my my um, audience is I'm only I'm only advertising to men, I can uncheck female, right? And so some people Google knows the gender, some people they don't. So um, you know if I if I definitely want it to only go to men, and I'm I definitely don't want any woman to see it ever, <laughs> then I might check un, uncheck unknown. Otherwise, I'd probably just leave it checked. And so, you know, some of those are going to go to men. Some of them are going to go to women. And it's not the end of the world. So the women are just going to skip the ad, right? And then ages, right? So that might be, you know, there's probably not a lot of 18-year-olds interested in the keto diet. That's probably going to be more like 25 to, I don't know, maybe 54. Uh, and and you, you want to leave this fairly broad. So if there's a question that, you know, yeah, maybe a 60-year-old would be interested. Okay, well, I'm going to put it up to 64. If maybe a 66-year-old would be interested, I'm going to put it 65 plus. Um, right, so I want to, and the algorithm will actually figure out more specifically. This is just kind of giving it a little bit of initial guidance for who your audience is, and then the algorithm will figure out who is actually likely to click. And then additional demographics you can do, whether they're a parent or not a parent, um, like if you have a homeschool curriculum, right? Obviously, you only want parents. Um, household income, you can target based on, well, it, this kind of depends on the price of your product. So if you have, let's say, a uh, a fairly expensive product. Let's say you have a, a online course that costs or a coaching program that costs ten thousand dollars. Well, somebody in the lower fifty percent of income probably is not going to be able to pay for that. So you might want it to be like top ten to thirty percent, right? And then you hit save. Oh, and then I got to call the audience. Give the audience a name. Um, let's call it keto diet. Uh, yeah. Just, Keto diet, that's fine. I could make it more descriptive. I could say keto diet, 25 plus, top 30% income, something like that. I'm not gonna get that far into it. Hit save. Um, okay, now I have my audience. Now optimized targeting is just, you're asking Google if it, it can have permission to show your ad to people outside of the market that you specify. So I usually leave that off. I've had mixed results with that, but I'd say just, to begin with, leave it off. Um, advanced settings, um, there's nothing there anyway. And then your YouTube video, you're just gonna copy the link to your video in there, right? And so let me just real quick, I'll get a video, just one of my videos. Um, you wanna upload your video normally as unlisted, Right, so this is a public video, but it works the same way. You wanna upload your video as unlisted if you don't want people to just randomly find it. And then paste it in there, paste the link in there. Um, you wanna paste your URL, so like whatever is the place that you want them to go. Uh, and then call to action. I usually just do learn more, um, or, but you can do any, any of those that make sense for you, right? Headline, something, this, like the text, it really doesn't matter very much. I put like uh, free training, if I'm offering a free training. And then long headline is like, learn how to do YouTube ads to make 10K plus per month, you know, whatever, like something a little more descriptive. And you have character limits here, right? So you only have 15 characters for the headline. You have 90 characters for the long headline for the description, and it shows you what it looks like here, by the way. I could say like, click here to learn how absolutely free. Something like that. You know, I don't really put a whole lot of thought into that because it doesn't matter a whole lot. And then hit create campaign. And, oh, well, I didn't put my final URL. I'll just put chrisshoot.com, which does actually exist, although I don't use it much. Create campaign. And there we go. Congratulations, your campaign is ready. So it probably will take uh, a day or two for it to be approved, um, sometimes faster. If it takes more than like three days, then just like copy and paste the campaign and try again. Uh, and then the next step really is just to analyze your numbers. Take a look at how the campaign is performing. So if you look at 
I mean, my campaigns dashboard here, you see like there's all these different metrics. And so that's a whole other can of worms, how to actually kind of understand what the numbers mean and how to how to figure out what's a, a good performing ad versus a bad performing ad, how to optimize, et cetera. So um, I'm not gonna get into that in this video. Again, I can do that in a future video. And if you are interested in having me deep dive into any of these steps or any of these parts that I did today, let me know in the comments because you know this is the first time I've made a video on this topic. And so if you guys are interested in it and you want me to continue, if you want me to go deeper, then, then absolutely let me know. And then I think um, you would also really enjoy this video, which is actually the one that I just um, used for my, my example there. So check that out and I'll see you soon.